Dan Lewis is a poet from the Worcester area of Massachusetts, and I like the way his bio reads on his website, which I thought I would share with you as introduction today. Dan says, while his true vocation is poetry, over the years he has made his living as a retail clerk, a milk tester, a wire stripper, a fish cutter, a librarian, a typist, a freelance editor, and a technical writer. He considers himself fortunate to live in central Massachusetts where there are some fine hiking trails that he appreciates as well as a vibrant arts community in support of writers and poets of all stripes. He's a longtime board member of the Worcester County Poetry Association and for many years the layout editor of the Worcester Review and creator of numerous broadsides celebrating the work of visiting poets in Worcester area. His work has appeared in numerous journals and he's author of two chapbooks of poetry as well as two full-length poetry collections, most recently Intimations of the Focal Plane with a description briefly using optics as an overarching metaphor. The collection explores layers of reality and mortality. Dan keeps a blog on his website that you can learn more about him and his art, and he lives on Patch Reservoir with his wife and no cats. <laughs> I'd like to invite you to give Dan a warm welcome as he comes up here this morning. Suppose we resolve to do the only thing that makes sense. Let the body do what it will, careening wildly toward disaster. Teach the mind to go along for the ride, wherever it goes, filching from each day some small pairing of joy. That's the opening uh, poem from this book, Intimations of the Focal Plane. I'm primarily reading from that book. Uh, toward the end, I'll read just a couple of, of newer poems. North Truro. I'd love to be able to read from the book, but my eyes are such now that I have to cheat and do it this way. North Truro. Fox this morning, trotting along the beach, Old words for new weather, exchanged glances, money back guarantee, anything not already taken. On the windowsill, shells, some stones, odd change from our pockets. You could walk from here to Wellfleet. If you were Jesus, you could walk to Boston. <laughs> what smooth stones is not just water? Remission, canticle, barnacles and green weed on the emerging rocks. And this is the title poem from the book. And if you get a chance at intermission, you may want to take a look at the cover. Uh, this photograph by my friend Dorothy Majedu uh, inspired this poem and, and kind of became the central piece of the book. <clears throat> Intimations of the Focal Plane from a photograph by Dorothy Majedu. What if nothing is real? What if light is volatile everywhere, all of it at once? What if any slice cut through this roiling soup captures only a random sample? Inside your brain or mine, elaborate fictions are built by whatever interrupts the flow. Window, mirror, cornea, lens. What if the sky appears only where we have learned to put it? Light strikes glass along a plane. The mind invents a story for the eye. Reflections confirm the fiction through which we move, because everything is mutable, and windows both transmit and reflect, mountains visible in the trunks of trees, grasslands erupting across wind-swept floorboards. <clears throat> I 
I have been trying for days to get this right. There was something like a pane of glass. First the vision passed through it, and then the body. <clears throat> there is nowhere else for us to live. Each layer is its own distinct illusion. <clears throat> there is a room, trees line the walls, through the window, mountains. If you sit at the table, you are both inside and outside. Images form on the surface of your retina, but you are learning to disbelieve them. This is just a sort of box into which I have put some things that might be real. Light is real, but its reflection makes things. Things are at best chimerical constructs. If you place your hands on a sheet of glass and it resists, what is it that you touch? There is a field, at its edge a border of stones, birch trees beyond. This is halfway up the wall. Above the trees, mountains. It appears to be spring, unless you count the harsher light from the open window. There, in the middle of the wood, another horizon, sky inside of sky. But this is only how it might be assembled, light glancing off the surfaces of impatient reason. Tomorrow, you might still move beyond the window, break the glass, begin again. Falling through the skylight, he sees the world shatter, everything, everything falling away. Wormhole. A thin, uncertain snow dusting the yard this morning, and chilly indoors. Did I tell you that I am dead already? That these dreams are only proof of an overactive imagination? Stand here at the bottom of the stairs. Place both hands on the railings. Now hunch forward slightly, as if leaning into the wind. See how the whole house becomes your ship, how you find the will to face the weather. Go ahead. My body is already here, where I left it, leaning in, inventing a future. <clears throat> Cold snap. Beyond the fence line, ice holds words in check. Nothing breaks this sky. Coins freeze on the tongue. Birds have long since abandoned the rafters. If there was a way into the cave, it is lost now. Someone has hung a pair of gloves on a clothesline. Their gestures pretend a way out of the story. But the iron bell remains silent, its clapper frozen to the rim of the known world. Check up. What then is held aloft, weightless almost, like a smile or a name? We have come here once again with hope and also with dread, a sort of tribunal, a judgment, except that the decision has already been rendered. Somewhere in the body it has been forming for weeks, secret counsel kept in the whirring machinery of red cells and white cells, in the shutting back and forth of countless chemical agents. Not a tribunal, then, but an oracle, the casting of bones which will proclaim how we move from here. Yes, like a name, and one of those names is letting go. A mere 21 grams, and already the breath is rehearsing its measured response. And this is not what? 
If you go back and read the lines now, you may convince yourself that the answer was always there, even when you were a child. At your very first memory, perhaps, your mother bopping your brow, the soft cloth cool against your inflamed skin. So difficult to live in this frail machine that seems possessed of its own will, able so easily to upset any apple cart. But here it is now, held aloft without reason, and you are still trapped in this contraption that stutters and fizzes and will not rest. Sorry about this. It's called neuropathy. <coughs> Heart of Oak for Michael, who built a treehouse. How his mind moved itself into the tree, wood fastened to wood, uncovering the helix at the oak heart, so that body becomes tree on climbing spitting itself into the ancient arboreal memory of growth. It is enough sometimes simply to unfold like this, pouring self back into the world. Notes from the Resistance. Spectral landscape beneath the rain-soaked trees, one leg shorter than the other, the ruler cannot stand for long. Such is the measure of a man. See how he holds out his empty hands, fodder for the mongers of truth. High noon summoned by the bailiff's kazoo, the policemen wear their own handcuffs, holding the keys deftly between their teeth. Every war intended to be the last war. Meanwhile, most of the water and much of the air has been fouled. Fires crossing the road like chickens. It is not, of course, our fault. History has its own momentum. A great deal is required to raise an electorate. And what we need is jobs. There are no substitutes for influence. Even the suicide bomber will not drink from this well. Christmas 2014, as if the world did not stand still, the unexpected light parting the clouds, because we are only here standing on this same daily ground, lifting these familiar burdens. No one says what happened to all those sheep when their keepers ran off to Bethlehem. After the cities have been bombed and burned, Someone will come to gather up the children, find refuge, perhaps, in an old barn, begin again. Non sequitur number 32. <laughs> Ascot, persimmon, purple loose strife, Six notes of a forgotten song. Sun returning after days of rain. The way the blue scarf framed her face. Enamorata, secret self. Kismet, whistling in the dark. San Mateo, 1953. What we must abandon is the story, because memory cannot be preserved finally. 
For years, I tried to remember just one of the tunes my grandmother would hum to herself, riding in my grandfather's blue Oldsmobile. Either way, there is no place for that music now. At seven, I didn't understand that the road was being rolled up behind us as we begged my grandfather to drive us into the hills on a Sunday afternoon. Delighted with his theatrical pretense of being lost, we could not know how far he had taken us into a mapless land. What we're left with matters little enough in the end. The stilled voice hearing having no authority. My father lay for hours in his own driveway with a shattered femur before they carted him off, raving. On the phone, crackling through 2,000 miles, his speech belonged already to somebody else. When he was cremated, I kept wondering what happened to the titanium rod they placed in his leg. What I remember is that drugged ghost in the wires insisting, don't come. The pond at Trout Brook from a photograph by Dorothy Medjetu. Perhaps I have been mistaken all these years trying to separate water from light. Perhaps they are the same thing after all. Could refraction be no more than a trick of the mind attempting to penetrate the layers? Who's to say that trees do not emerge from themselves? and all these glistening surfaces are only the edges of our sight. Maybe I have misunderstood the membrane that divides self from the world. Status Report, February 2015. You do remember then, because dreams contain almost anything worth having. Last night it was fish that swam only in snow, their silver sides flashing up through the sun glare as they passed. I want absolutely everything that I want, but it is late. Small pains creep along the highways of my body. My doctor says he is out of rabbits to pull from the hat. And still, the actors stand on the edge of the stage, mouths moving. There is no sound. And before I read the last poem in the book, two short poems that are quite recent. <clears throat> Infusion. Not all days are bad. The poison sluices through the sieve of the body. Hair, <clears throat> Hair strewn by the wind snags on the shrubbery, lining for spring bird nests. Behind closed eyes, colors evolve new shades of depth. I am a small boat on a river rushing through black caves, cradling nourishment and destruction. I remain held in this dark. See, I am here at the very center, waving my arms, gasping for breath. Water fills the bathroom sink emitting a curl of steam in the chill morning. You are living your life. This is what is, not that other thing you dreamed of. In a minute, 
He will shut off the tap with a smooth pressure on the handle and then plunge your hands into the soothing warmth with a shudder of pure joy. <clears throat> the last poem in the book and the last poem I will read, St. Elizabeth's Day. Well and good, but I can't seem to penetrate the fog this morning. My mouth is full of dust. No one is playing the trumpet. You understand the importance of seeing the world as it is, but my desk is cluttered with stones dumped from other people's pockets. Listen, I'm as much in love with living as the next guy. Why do I have this need to paint my face red and walk out into the woods raving? Yesterday, we blew the leaves from the yard. Last night, it rained and stripped more from the oaks. If there are only a few days left, I want them all to shine. Bring me my glockenspiel. Let's make some noise. Okay. On a subway platform, star spangling our evening, a young man cups his harmonica in large hands, just the way my father did. Ithaca, 1952. His harmonica, her accordion, her voice a silver bird. Small daughters listening, in that moment, sure. Neighbors stepping out of the shadows of their own wars, gathering near. less than ever at ease with spangled lies, and older than anyone sharing that remembered back porch light. I move to stand with my child self, join the tune. Though the heart be weary, sad the day, and long, still to us at twilight comes love's old song, love's old sweet song. Will there ever be peace? 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 Passed on from our fathers, passed on to our sons. We think we know the answer, what's right for everyone. Just a little more killing, well, things gonna be all right. We'll reach that blissful state of peace if we fight, and we fight, and we fight. Will there ever be peace? 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 It's been the same through history. Today, it's just as real. There's never been an answer found upon the battlefield. We must learn to talk of peace and what we're living for. Let's find a better solution 
than a war and a war and a war will there ever be peace 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 Will there ever be peace? We were put upon this earth, a global family. We search for answers in the dark. The light is hard to see. The bird of peace is weeping now give her wings to fly to spread her love or all the world and heal the bleeding sky will there ever be peace 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 Will there ever be peace? Thank you so much. Thank you, Cheryl.